The Obumseli family were on Dr. Phil. So you did not know anything had happened? No, nobody called me. I'm shocked, that's just inconceivable. I'm so sorry that that happened to you. Yes, I was at work and the lady said that she's calling to know if I'll give them the permission for Toby to donate his organs. And I, I'm like, what? Donate what? I told her, I said, ma'am, I don't understand what you're saying. And she asked me, are you saying that the medical examiner's office has not contacted you? And that was on Monday. Last month, you know, the OnlyFans model, I don't like calling her an OnlyFans model, model maybe OnlyFans porn star, you know, stabbed her boyfriend, Christian Toby Obumseli, to death in their Miami apartment. Now, Dr. Phil did an intense episode with sitting down with, you know, I believe it was his siblings, his uh, parents, and his attorney or their attorney. They're seeking justice. And they brought up so many talking points, so many conversations that stemmed from this. But here are some of the takeaways that I was paying attention to. The first thing was how the family found out. Now, nobody had the decency to call the family and let them know about his death. So that was already a problematic situation. It seems as though, and we talk about the general disregard for black lives, you know, de general disregard. And, and they also talked about how w within 24 hours of his death or within, I can't remember how long of his death, more a little bit more, over 24 hours, they were already ready to close the case. And he was very dismissive. He was like, you know, you guys need to give me time to do my job. Um, you know, we're, we're saying, okay, well, can you just share anything that you know? All we know is that our family member has been killed. And he was just very, very cold. He wouldn't tell us what occurred until finally, um, when he called later on Monday evening, and he stated that, you know, uh, based on Courtney's reporting that that Courtney had killed him in self-defense and that there was enough evidence for him to, you know, close the case, close the investigation at that particular time. Um, this was on Monday? This was, this was Monday. Within he had 24 a, hours? Within less than 24 hours, he had enough information to conclude that this was a domestic dispute and based on the reports that he had that that was all the information that he needed. We just do not hear about this enough, but black deaths are not taken seriously by detectives. You know, I have a friend who had a friend that died and the same thing happened recently, you know, just about around the same time as Toby died. The detectives just sort of like try to close the case and dismiss the case like, oh, you know, whether it was some, they just dismiss it and they take the side of whiteness and dismiss any sort of black uh, deaths. So not only do black lives not matter, but black deaths don't matter in this country. Um, and so that's a problem that in itself, and I, and I really want to commend, I really commend Dr. Phil for putting this on his platform. It is so important that a platform like the Dr. Phil show, it's so vital for black stories, for this to be heard by America, right? By America, so they can see the double standard. Ultimately, it was Oprah Winfrey, a black woman, that gave Dr. Phil his start. So it's not that he owes it to us, but I like that he, you know, he honored that. He honored the fact that these are human beings. Let's cover this case. And that is the importance of that. That's what is important, that we make them accountable, that we expose their wrongdoing and make them accountable. So this is the importance of media getting involved. So them closing the case, you know, closing the case, just assuming that this girl, you know, was a victim. Now, Toby's friends did speak up. You know, they said they were close friends with the couple. One of them claimed that um, she was close friends. She was best friends with them. Um, but later on, I believe it seemed to be the same girl. They, she didn't want to show her identity, but it seems that it was the same girl that was doing interviews, you know, with the press and just explaining that she was close to both of them. And it was um, Courtney that was violent. 
It was Courtney that was always violent, and Toby was a soft person. He just isn't that character. But we have to do, we do have to understand that these were Toby's friends first, and so they're obviously going to take his side. Um, but regardless, you know, they've said this boy was not a violent individual. Needless to say, one of Courtney's friends did speak up and say that he was stealing from her. He was actually stealing money from her and like back and forth, like for a full, like two or three months, just stealing money from her account. And she was really upset about that, obviously. Yeah. And I have no idea if that was the reason w the domestic violence happened or whatnot, mm -hmm. but obviously somebody doesn't stab somebody for no reason. They have all sorts of claims that he was pimping her out, you know, sex trafficking and all these claims, right? They do have these claims, but the friend did not realize, Courtney's friend did not realize that she revealed something very vital and it was the emotive for her, for Courtney to kill him. The mo and Dr. Phil revealed that in, in, on the show. That means that there was a motive. You claim that he, she was stealing or he was stealing from her. That was a motive for her to kill him. And why aren't the detectives taking this seriously? Why aren't they paying attention to this? So she did have a motive to kill him. Um, and then in addition, you know, I've seen very various reports online about Toby and, you know, I guess it's on her OnlyFans, but he used to participate with her in OnlyFans. Now there are a few things that come across from this, right? So he was participating with her in these OnlyFans videos. Now on one side, uh, you know, I saw a report that they talked about how like this sort of defends or backs up the claims that he was using her for sex trafficking, if that even is the case. Um, but regardless of whether he had a sex tape or whether he was involved with her, whether he was using her for sex trafficking or whatever the case was, that doesn't warrant a death. And so you would need to prosecute him or you know, you would need to prosecute him through that, you know, through the proper systems. That does not warrant you necessarily killing him, you know. You know, claiming that she was, she was, he was using her for sex trafficking and all sorts and, you know, claiming that, you know, he was stealing from her. The family completely dismissed this. The family also mentioned that he was not rich, you know, that he was not a rich person. They did all sort of like say that he was not a rich black person. Um, which also supports the idea that he sh that he was stealing from her, but regardless, even if he was a thief, the, the <laughs> there you could put him in jail for that. You don't need to kill him, right? It's still a murder, right? Um, and if he was using her for sex trafficking, which I don't think is even realistic, um, because she clearly, with her own volition, volition, was doing this well before he came into the picture right? Well before he came into the picture. So this is something that she was doing. But here's where there's an interesting twist. So um, the family did start up a GoFundMe. We're asking for $100,000, raised about $80,000 thereabouts, around $80,000. And this is a lot of people from the Nigerian community donating to this, uh, to him and his funeral and all of that. But once people started finding out in the Nigerian community, people started finding out that he was participating with her in OnlyFans. It's apparently a lot of people were asking for their money back. Um, <laughs> uh, very unfortunate. And then, uh, of course, you know, we know how the black community just sort of reacted to his comments from when he was 17. You know, I understand where black women are coming with that, but I don't think that... Uh, that is a reason to celebrate somebody's death. Um, you know, he was a teenager when he said this. And he, yes, there's, there's a lot of evidence to support that he was still spewing this type of rhetoric even now. But irrespective of his behavior, I don't think it's a reason to celebrate his death. It's kind of like how Kevin Samuels has just passed away. As disgusting as the things that he would promote on his platform, far worse than anything that Toby even said. It's, I don't really see that many people going out celebrating. Actually, there are a lot of people celebrating his death. But I just it doesn't justify celebrating his death, 
right? This, uh, you know, and this person was stabbed. My issue with the Toby Obumsali case is the fact that this woman is free. They have not arrested her. She's walking around, roaming around as a murderer, right? Who else is she going to murder? That is what scares me about this woman. Who else is she going to murder? She's going out living her life, potentially finding new victims to take advantage of. And that is what I find problematic. The justice system needs to do what it's supposed to do and prosecute this individual through, you know, treat her as they would treat anybody else. Um, prosecute her to the full extent of the law. This is what needs to happen to this woman. Very disturbing stuff. She's roaming around. She's free. But yeah, definitely go watch that Dr. Phil episode. It was super interesting. Offered so many interesting perspectives. Went, you know, really deep. De did a deep dive into this case, you know, answered questions that we just didn't know in the public. And I guess as time passes, more will be revealed, but definitely this woman should not be roaming around freely. It's quite disturbing. Um, and again, I don't think we, anyone believes that it was self-defense, but those are my thoughts. Let me know your thoughts. Leave a comment down below. Don't forget to like, follow, subscribe, all the above. My name is Kenem and see you next time. Peace.